Father, we thank you this morning. We worship you this morning. We honor you this morning, God. You did not have to wake us up, hallelujah. You did not have to allow us to start on our way, God. You planted in our hearts a desire to be in the house of worship, God. And so, God, we, uh, we thank you, God, that you made the way possible, God, that we could wake up this morning in relatively good health, God, that we could press our way into the house of God in spite of what we're going through in our lives. And even though we're in the midst of a global pandemic, God, you have graced us with health and you have graced us with strength and you have graced us with a praise on our lips, God. We can still open up our mouths, God. Our, our, our lungs are still filled with good oxygen this morning, God. And we are worthy of your praise. You are worthy of the glory of your worthy of the honor. We do not this morning, God. You did not have to do it, God. You did not have to last. Much of the nation was celebrating July 4th, God. Hallelujah, we made it through the fireworks, God. But now we need your fire to fall from heaven, God. We need your glory to fall from heaven, God. We need your presence to fall from heaven, God. We need a touch from you, God. Hallelujah, we cannot go through the rest of this week without you, God. Hallelujah, you've been good to us. Better than we've been to ourselves, God. And that's why we stand in your presence, God. We on this wise. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their words. And the word of our Lord is Bless. Bless. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I just told you about our prayer list. I want you to keep, hallelujah, those incarcerated and cannot be visited uh, during Amen. this pandemic. Oh, Sometimes God. we put those incarcerated on the back burner. We forget about them. Amen. Hallelujah. While they're thinking about us and while they're concerned that there's no family members visiting or, or calling on them or sending help and in this time and in this season, as the church, we have to pray for everybody. Oh yes. We have to be concerned about everybody. And some of us in this room, some of us in this virtual space have family members that are incarcerated. Hallelujah. And they're wondering when they're going to hear from us again. Some may be incarcerated and infected. 
And that's a hard place to be in right now. So we want to add them to our prayer list. We want to add Sister Jennifer, Brother Armando, Brother Marcusia to our prayer list in Jesus' name as they're going through right now. We want to lift up the families. We've always been lifting up Mother McLaurin down in Georgia, the Green family. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. We just want to lift up all the families connected to us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to ask the praise and worship team to come forward this morning and lead us in worship. Hallelujah. They're not entertaining. They are leading us. I desire you to join us. You might not be in the room with us. Hallelujah. We might not be able to hear your response to the call that we make unto God. Hallelujah. But we trust that it is happening. Bible says that we just agree as touching, touching, and agree come together. God will do miraculous things. Love.
more of the song says after this. Amen. Anybody have an after this this morning? Amen. After all this is over, we will bless the name of the Lord.
Simon again, the protagonist in the text, Simon, who we also eventually know as Peter, we find that he is jaded, like many of us, hallelujah, by his late night fishing expedition. He's disappointed with life, hallelujah. How many of you under the sound of my voice this morning, I'm preaching already, have been disappointed with your life? You've been doing some things in life and you thought you were doing the best that you could and you thought you had developed some level of experience in this thing, but it was not giving you what you expected. And this was the story of Peter in this particular pericope. He's disappointed it has not gone as he has expected. And he's challenged by this stranger. Remember, in this text, Jesus and Peter aren't yet friends. Jesus and Peter aren't yet teacher and, and rabbi, aren't yet rabbi and, and student. Hallelujah. At this point, uh, Jesus is a stranger to Peter, but he challenges him to go back out again and do something that he had been doing all night. I come to declare to some somebody that there's some symbolism in that text. Some of us have been working all night, and night is not about the absence of the sun. Night is not about those 12 hours between, hallelujah, uh, 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 9 o'clock at night and 3 o'clock in the morning. That's not what night is. Night is when you're doing what you're doing in ignorance. Night is when you're doing something without understanding. Night is when you don't have full, hallelujah, comprehension of what you're doing. When you think you know what you're doing and it's not giving you outcomes that you thought you should have. And that's what it was about working all night. Peter had been fishing all night, doing what he knew to be a fisherman. He knew that the fish bit at night. But for some reason, this stranger comes along and tells him, I want you to go back out into the deep. Go back out to where you work your work. Go back out to where you do your thing. Uh, but do it my way. I'm going to challenge somebody this morning. God is coming back to you in the midnight hour. He's coming to you in your night times. He's coming to you in your sleep. He's coming to you in your dreams. And he's challenging you not to change your job, not to change your residence, but to do it his way. Hallelujah. In the same place that you familiar with. And he's challenged by this stranger named Jesus to go back out to the deep, let down his nuts again, and this time his attempt will be successful. Amen. That's a promise that Jesus makes. If you do it my way, you will be successful. Wow. Verse 6 says, and this time their nuts were so full that they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. If you obey God, he will bless you beyond your capacity. And you will have to be forced to be a blessing to others that are connected to you. You gotta understand what I'm talking about this morning. Now, pathway forces. Who has you become? Hallelujah. In the text here, Peter is just meeting Jesus. He's just meeting this stranger named Jesus. And when the verse 8 says, when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, sir, please leave us. I'm too much of a sinner for you to have around. I'm not good enough. Listen to what he's saying in, in, in contemporary language. I'm not good enough to be treated this kindly. And, and there's so many of you under the sound of my voice this morning. You are in the middle of a pickle. You are in a bind right now. You are in the midst of a struggle. You are in the middle of a challenge. And God is telling you, do it my way. And what should I do for your life? And then God blesses you beyond your understanding. God knocks you off your feet with a blessing. And you stand there saying, I am worthy of this blessing. I'm not worthy of this favor. I'm not qualified to be blessed like this. I'm not qualified to be done good like this. And I'm declaring to you, I hush your mouth and you better take that blessing. Amen. <laughs> Bible says in verse 9, for he was all struck by the size of their catch as were the others with him. God will not bless you secretly. God 
is going to bless you and others will notice. Yes. Bless the name of Jesus. You got to understand that because he's building you a testimony. And in order for you to have a testimony, you don't just have something to say, you got something to show. Right? Come with it, God. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to have something to show when this is all over. I'm not just going to have words. I'm going to have something to show in my life that God is working my situation out. That's right. As we go a little further in the text or in scripture this morning, approximately two and a half years later, in the Gospel of Matthew, go there with me, Matthew chapter 16, starting at the 15th verse, we encounter this Peter again. And now Peter has developed a relationship with Jesus. Two and a half years later, Peter has been walking with Jesus in an intimate way. Peter wasn't just one of the disciples. Peter was one of the disciples that was in Jesus' inner circle. And so Peter was revealed. Some things were revealed to Peter that was not revealed to all twelve. Some things were spoken in the life of Peter that was not spoken into the life of all the other twelve. It was not that Peter was more important than the other twelve. It was just that Peter had been chosen to lead the other twelve. And that's what you got to understand. And that's the problem in the body of Christ. Sometimes you look at the leader and it looks like the leader is so far ahead of the followers. And it looks like if the leader is more important to God than the followers. But God has chosen the leader because God has equipped the leader with something and with a mindset and a character and a personality that the leader won't run ahead and he will leave you behind. But he'll give you a leader that's after his own heart. That even after he requires a thing that God decides for him to acquire, he'll come back and teach you and guide you how to get the same things. And I've come to encourage you this morning. That was what God was trying to do in the life of Peter. It wasn't that Peter was more important than the others. It was that Jesus saw something in Peter. Hallelujah. That he could use as an influencer over the other 12 disciples. You know, we got this thing called influencers, Instagram influencers, social media influencers, and some of them committing suicide. Hallelujah. Got young people at home. Hallelujah. Looking up to them. Wanting to have a million followers like they got a million followers. But they got a million followers and slitting their wrists. They got a million followers and driving off cliffs. They got a million followers and jumping off bridges. Hallelujah. Why? Because they got all these followers, but they don't know what direction they ought to be going in. And you got to find out who's your leader following. You can't follow somebody that ain't following. is a stranger to Peter. But when we encounter him again in Matthew 16, which is after the Luke chapter 5 episode, here's what the text says, starting at verse 15, Matthew 16. Then he, Jesus, asked them, the disciples, who do you think I am? And Simon Peter answered, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. If you read the text in Matthew 16, Hallelujah, read it all the way through. The other disciples had uh, what, what you would call, my God, a potpourri of answers for Jesus. They said, some say that you are John the Baptist, come back. Some say that you are Elijah. Some say that you are this, and some say that you are one of the prophets. Some say that you are that. But Peter is targeted in his answer. He's focused in his answer. He doesn't miss in his answer. He declares, you are the Christ. Can I break that down? That means you are the anointed one. That, that doesn't mean little C Christ. That means big C Christ. Hallelujah. He said you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. This was a declaration of divinity. Say declaration, declaration. of divinity. divinity. That could not be taken lightly. What, what Peter said at this moment was not something to be brushed off. It was not something to be glossed over. And verse 17, it tells us why it ought not to be glossed over. God has blessed you, Simon, son of Jonah. Jesus said, for my father in heaven has personally revealed this to you. This is not from any human 
source. Peter, by Matthew 16, has so much developed an understanding and appreciation of this stranger Jesus that Peter now has a relationship with God. Y'all missed it. Hallelujah. He's not just Jesus' companion. He's now in communion with God because God speaks to him directly. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells him, you, you didn't come up with this on your own. You, you didn't go by what the folks say. <laughs> you, you were saying what God has told you. Verse 18. And you are Peter. Many biblical scholars claim this is when Simon's name was changed to Peter. This is when he adopts the name that Jesus gives him. Peter means Petros, meaning little rock. He says, you are a little rock, a stone. And upon this rock, not you, but upon the word that just came out of your mouth, upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell shall not King James says, and the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. oh, the gates, the gates, the gates. Gates are the entranceway, the access way, the access point, the transitional place from earth into hell. And he says, hell is trying to expand its territory. Hell is trying to reclaim your land. You know, we drive along hard scrabble and we ask ourselves, how the folk that live along hard scrabble, how they making it out? Now that they're riding in the streets, and now there's something called eminent domain, and that the government is using to just reclaim land that folk work hard and sweat and tears to buy. The government said, uh oh, it's ours because it's on a main road. And you gotta understand, that's how the world will do. The world will take from it. What you work hard for. Hallelujah. And so even though you work hard for it, it wasn't yours to begin with. Jesus tells Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell cannot claim eminent domain. Yes. Woo! The gates of hell, I don't care what they do, they can't claim eminent domain. I don't care if hell is trying to enlarge its highway. Hallelujah, it's not going to enlarge its highway on your property. And you got to understand. Hallelujah. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever doors you lock on earth shall be locked in heaven. And whatever doors you open on earth shall be open in heaven. Another verse quickly, Luke 22. Luke 5, Jesus is a stranger, challenges this man. The first time he meets him, he works a miracle that blows this man's mind and tells this man, I'm not worthy even for you to be in my presence. By the next time we meet him, he's declaring that Jesus ain't a normal man. He ain't a regular rabbi, that he's a son of God. Let's listen to Luke 22 and 54. So they seized him, him, Jesus, and led him to the high priest's residence, and Peter, the man we call Simon in Luke 5, followed at a distance. The soldiers lit a fire in the courtyard and sat around it for warmth, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl, servant girl, noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she spoke. This man was with Jesus. Don't miss what the woman is saying here. She's saying, he ain't a stranger to Jesus. Why? She was probably saying, I've seen him somewhere before with that man. So by Luke 22, Peter is so close to Jesus, he's now associated with Jesus just by sight. Hallelujah. If you see Jesus, you're going to see Peter. If you see Peter, you're going to see Jesus. Is your life like that? Who have you become? Do folks see Jesus when they see you or do they see the devil? Oh, God. Wow. It goes on. 
he had denied a woman, he said, I don't even know the man. And after a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, sir, I'm not, Peter replied. About an hour later, someone else flatly stated, I know this fellow is one of Jesus' disciples, for both are from Galilee. I ask the question again, who have you become? Are you from the same places that Jesus hung out in? Yeah. Glory. Are you too uppity to hang out where Jesus hung out? Yeah. Glory. <laughs> they said, mm, you don't just look like you've been with him. You sound like you've been with him. Mm -hmm. In fact, you carry yourself like you've been with him. Who have you become? Do you carry yourself? Do you talk like you've been with him? Do you look like you've been with him? Do you smell like you've been with him? There's something about you that appears to resemble him. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And as he said the words, a rooster crowed. At that moment, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered what he had said. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times. And Peter walked out of the courtyard crying bitterly. Two times in Peter's life, he's crying. The first time he's crying because it's not tears of sadness, it's tears of joy, it's tears of fear, it's tears of apprehension. Apprehension that he's not worthy even to be in the presence of this great man. And now he's crying bitterly, tears of tears of sorrow, because he has found himself denying association with a man he had grown to love. Who have you become? Have you become the kind of saint who's ashamed to call yourself a Christian? Who's living in denial? Who will deny, deny, deny rather than claim that you're a child of the living God? Last scripture I'm going to read and I'm done. Acts chapter 4. I hope you're catching where I'm going this morning. I want to talk about progression. I want to talk about individuals. The individual we're looking at is Peter. Peter, more than any other character in the Gospels, probably is emblematic and symbolic of how many of us view ourselves. We view ourselves when we meet Jesus as unqualified for Jesus even to see value in us. And then many of us get sold out because of how Jesus, is blessed. Jesus blesses us the first time he meets us. We lose our mind. My God, ain't good. He, this is what he do, but I'm down. And then we, we get so spiritual. Remember, this is the same Peter, watch this, that cut a man's ear off a couple hours earlier than when he denied him. Uh oh, yup. That seems contradictory. He was passionate about Jesus in the dark in the garden. But in some firelight, a couple hours later, he denied him. Con seems contradictory. But ain't that familiar for some of us? Oh. On Sunday morning, we on fire. <laughs> Glory to God. In the sanctuary with the garden. Hey, my son. In, in, our, in our garden. Hallelujah. In our prayer place. Glory to God. We on fire. But when we get out there in the firelight of the world, we say, oh, I ain't going to church. I don't do that. Wow. Contradictory. You're no different than Peter. But here, Acts chapter 4, listen to what the text says. While they were talking to the people, this is Peter and John and some other, the chief priests, the captain of the temple police, and some of the Sadducees came over to them, very disturbed. The New Revised Standard Version says, much annoyed. 
The message Bible says, indignant that Peter and John were claiming that Jesus had risen from the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, jailed them overnight. Oh God. Glory. This is the same Peter, y'all. Tell your neighbor progression. To advance. Amen. Moving forward. A oh, pathway forward. Pathway. I'm going somewhere in God. Yeah. That's the name of God. I don't care what folk think about me. I'm going somewhere in God. And you got to get a mindset like Peter. Hallelujah. He, he may look contradictory in some situations, but he had a heart for God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, now the text says, verse 4. Let me read verse 3 again because I want you to miss that part. They arrested them. And since it was already evening, jail them overnight. Mm. Verse 4 says, and it is not by happenstance or coincidence that we have verse 4 after verse 3. It says verse 4, it begins with, but, but many of the people who heard the message believed it. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. It didn't matter that the message came from some folks that ended up locked up. With charges. Hallelujah. Even though the message came from some undesirables, some incarcerated folks, some people with a record, even though the message came from them, there were people that said, There's something about their message. Right. I believe it. Right. Yeah, not miss, don't, don't listen. Even though the folk that gave the message were in a condition and a situation that didn't look good, folk heard the message and it was good to them. church stagnant in growth because you're experiencing a famine and a drought in Jesus preaching. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe that's the reason your church ain't growing because you ain't preaching enough Jesus. Well. No, no, notice what, what the qualifier for the growing church wasn't that the preacher looked wonderful. Uh-oh. And one that the preacher was perfect. And one that the preacher, hallelujah, followed all the rules. And one that the preacher, hallelujah, didn't have no charges or record. It was that the preacher, regardless of his condition, he declared that Jesus is Lord. The one that you crucified. The one that you killed. The one that you laid upon the cross. He rose three days later. And it's by his power that we're able to preach what we preach. And to heal the folk that we see that you see me as you are. It ain't me, Peter. It ain't me, John. It ain't me, Andrew. It ain't me, Matthew. It ain't me, Peter. It's Jesus. Yeah. My God. Jesus. And if you don't.
don't use me, he'll use somebody else. Yeah. He might use you. Verse 5. The next day, it happened that the council of all the Jewish leaders was in session in Jerusalem. Tell you, the holy convocation <laughs> was taking place. That's right. And all the who's who of the church was in town. The bishops council, the apostles board, everybody was in town. And everybody and anybody was in attendance. And Annas, the, the high priest, was there. Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other high priest relatives. Don't miss this. The council was made up of legacy leadership. You know what legacy leadership is? Yeah. You know, I went to Ivy League University, and it's got legacy admissions. Because it believes in topping the fact that it served generations of the same family. So my daughters literally have first dibs at acceptance into the University of Pennsylvania because I went there and finished. So, so, so they, they are ahead of other folk who try to get in that they never had no family there. That's called legacy admissions. So, 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 so this, this council was a legacy council. And so they were looking at Peter and John and saying, wait, hold up. These guys preaching some scripture. They deep in the book. But I don't remember them being in our class. Mm -hmm. I don't remember them matriculating into my school. I, I, I don't remember them being in my engineering class or being in my literature class. I don't remember these guys. Who, who are these guys? Listen to what the text says. Verse 7. So the two disciples were brought in before them. By what power or by whose authority have you done this? The council demanded. They were questioned. Can I make it contemporary? Who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. That's right. you, know, you know, this preacher business, even among preachers, you get that. Who do you think you are? Who are you connected to? Mm -hmm. I'm connected to Jesus. That's right. That's right. I honor my leader. I'm, I'm fully connected, connected. I'm fully committed. But when folks try to come sideways, because truthfully, they're not trying to disrespect you. They're trying to disrespect what you're connected to. Because they're saying what you're connected to ain't not Jesus either. But the devil is a liar. But the Bible tells us it is not by my cars and my houses and land, but it's by my fruit. And so if you look around the fruit that my leader produces, God, hallelujah, it's good fruit. Of a good tree. Who do you think you are? By whose authority did you get what my grandmother said, the gumption to do these things? Mm -hmm. You out here preaching this Jesus. Who, who told you that you could do this? Who, who, who gave you license to do this? Listen to verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, y'all don't miss it. Then Peter, it does not say filled with the flesh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say, then Peter cussed them out. Huh? It says, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, honorable leaders and elders of our nation, if you mean the good deed done to the cripple and how he was healed, let me clearly say to you and to all the people of Israel that it was done in the name and the power of Jesus from Nazareth, the Messiah, the man you crucified. Peter said this is an opportunity to preach Jesus. Every time you get in the past, don't cry, don't cuss, preach Jesus. Open up your mouth, tell somebody about his goodness, and watch what he does Amen. in your life. Hallelujah. He said, let me clearly stick to you to all the people of Israel, that it was done in the name and the power of Jesus from Nazareth, the Messiah, the man you crucified. But God raised back to life again. It is by his authority that this man stands here healed. Some people are wondering, how are you making it? The last place they left you, you were on your back. Mm. You were down in a ditch. Hallelujah. You were eating scraps. 
you are thirsty and hungry for just anything to suffice your flesh. But they've come back and you're standing on your feet. I need the folks standing on your feet. He walked out. She walked out. They tried to take everything. They said without them you are nothing. But for some reason, without them you are standing. Without them you are better. Without them you are attractive. You are more attractive to others. Without them, the folk that you really desire now want to be with you. Without them. But as long as you are with them, you are I want you to say this. I want you to type this in. They may bury you. They may bury me. But God's got a shovel. Oh, glory to God. God's got a shovel that can uptake and overturn any dirt. It don't matter what the dirt is. If the dirt is prostitution, God's got a shovel. If the dirt is a lifestyle, saw the boldness of Peter and John and could see, listen, they were obviously, listen, uneducated, non-professionals. They were amazed and realized what being with Jesus had done for them. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all miss it entirely. Let me read that again. What? Let me ask you a question. What has being with Jesus done for you? Hallelujah. How has it changed your outlook? How does it change how you look out at life? How has it changed how that look at you? How have you changed since you've been with Jesus? Verse 13 said, When the council saw the of Peter and John and could see that they were obviously uneducated non-professionals they were amazed and realized what being with Jesus had done for them on your pathway forward you got to realize who you become it's not only about what God is doing in you, what God is doing for you, what God is doing for you, what Me. I don't care what people call me. I don't care how people view me. Hallelujah. And I want to reiterate. I'm not telling you you ought to care. But I'm telling you this. Don't let your cares be the driver of how you do things. You better let the fear and the faith and the trust and the care of God be the driver of how you respond in life. But today this message is to individuals. I remember when I arrived in America, a young immigrant from the West Indies, from the Caribbean, and I walked a whole ways of Boys and Girls High School in Brooklyn, New York. I was real cultural. Hallelujah. I dress cultural. I talk cultural. I look cultural. I even walk cultural. I had a box. I had a swag that was Caribbean. Hallelujah. And I felt out of place. Hallelujah. And when I walked into the cafeteria, that first lunchtime, I looked around. You know how y'all look. To figure out where you gonna fit in in the lunchroom. I walked in. I looked around that lunchroom. I was trying to find my pathway forward. I looked over. There was a Puerto Rican table. A table where guys from the Dominican Republic all speak in Spanish. I said, they're Caribbean, but that's not my crew. Because I don't speak their language. You got to understand. In the pathway forward, you got to find 
It was a table for the ballers. You know, I could play a little ball, you know. I could do a little work in the paint, you know. I could jump too. I had a good leap, you know. Had a little trap background, you know, I could leap. Coming from our Bears, from Harrison College, we had a pretty good basketball team, and I played basketball at Harrison College. I had a little jump, you know. You know, I knew how to play a little inside game. You know, listen to Patrick Ewing, he said, you know, when he was big man at his time, you played in the paint. Big men today played threes. Come on. Big men today, they out there shooting threes uh -huh. like, like they point guards. <laughs> well, what the word? Big as you are. You need to be throwing people out the paint. What Come you, on. What you doing? You know, I, I, I had a little, you know, had a little something. But I went to a high school that boasted, um, um, you know, Lenny Wilkins went to my high school. Yeah. Some of y'all know yes. basketball. Lenny Wilkins went to my high school. You know, the coach, the old coach of Atlanta, uh, what's it called? Oh, Atlanta. Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. He's, he's coach, legendary coach of the Atlanta Hawks. That was, he went to my high school. So so I went to high school that produced ballers. So I said, uh, that ain't my crew. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't my crew. You know, I could run fast. You know, I, and if I knew how to play football, I probably could be a good wide receiver, but I didn't know how to play football. So football took a one mile. What my, what my, what my crew, what my, what my crew, and I was, you know, perturbed, I didn't know which direction to go. You know, after you done got your tray of food, you should mm -hmm. try to decide what that direction. Well, yeah. And then I heard, Bumbo! Oh, oh, I said, oh, <laughs> oh that, that sounds familiar. Oh, that, that, that's, that sounds like my language. Oh, you know. Grandma was frown on that language, but, you know, we talk that language in the streets. So, oh, oh, that's, oh, that, that sounds like my people. I looked over in the corner, and the brother had on a Paco outfit, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, Paco Rabanne, you know, colorful, you know. <laughs> Another one had on a damage outfit, tore up, you know. That was, oh, that's my crew right there. That, 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 that's my crew right there. That, that, that's my crew. That, that's my crew. As you advance forward, Inquire. How do you determine your crew? <laughs> How do you determine the folks that you hang out with? I got over the table. I, well, I, my first friend, the one that started the bum, you know, don't want to say it on the church service. <laughs> he was Errol from Jamaica. Errol. <laughs> Errol. Okay, my crew right here. Then my, then my crew right here. Then, then I met Raw. And Raw, so they might be tuned in. They was from Guyana, my GT Bano. I said, Oh, that, that's my crew. This is my crew right here. I'm good. I'm good. Why? Because they spoke the same language that I spoke. What do you represent to the world that gives them an inkling that they may find a place to fit into the kingdom? I was able to fit in because my friends thought enough of me to let me in. Why? Because they saw in me what they had seen in themselves the first time they arrived off the boat, off the airplane, when they landed at Boys and Girls High School, and they got their lunch, and they started to make their way to a table. They remembered when they had the same experience. Who have you become? Have you become so wonderful in God that you don't remember for many of us is that we've often affixed negative and eliminating ideologies to those that we deem lost, out of place, or new. As I, as I close this morning. When we dig into the text, we meet Peter in Luke chapter 5. He's lost, he's jaded, he's upset because the life that he's lived, it has not brought to him what he's expected all his life. He's been a fisherman all his life. He's been full of a level of experience as a fisherman. But he looks around and he still has not moved up. He has not seen upward mobility. He's just been a fisherman. He's just been able to make it. And this particular night, he went out and he came back with nothing. And Jesus interrupts 
preaching. Jesus was on the shore preaching and teaching. And Jesus said, can I get on your boat for a minute? I just go out a little deeper. Jesus wants him. Jesus wants something of him. But before Jesus takes anything from him, Jesus does something for him. I've come to declare to somebody this morning, that's the God we serve. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Before he ever takes from you, he's going to try to give you, attempt to give you something. But you've got to take it. You've got to claim it. And the Bible says, he tells Peter, go back out into the deep. I know what happened last night. I know you caught nothing. I know you're upset. I know you're trading. I know you've been working that job. I know you've been trying to be up. I know they keep overlooking you. I know they keep giving you a bad evaluation. I know they're not keeping your range. They keep promising one. But it never comes. But I'm telling you, don't quit. Go back out to the deep. Try it again. Apply it Hallelujah. Go out to that room. Go out to that house. Go out to that car. I know that sound, sound like a broken record. But I challenge you today. Go back to it. He said, Jesus is the Messiah. In Luke 22, he says, I don't know him. Who have you become? Have you become fearful because of your connection to Jesus? Or have you become more fearless because you're recognized as one of his? In Luke 22, around the fire. Don't miss this. He's recognized by a powerless servant girl. And he gets scared. In Acts 4, he's recognized by powerful high priests. And he is scared. Somebody saying, what's the difference? In Luke 22, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory. In Acts 4, verse 8, it says, and the Holy Spirit, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, he declared that it is by the name and the authority of Jesus. What am I saying this morning? Point number one is who have you become? Have you become fearful or have you become fearless? What have you become? Point number two. The Bible says they looked at him. Uneducated, non professionals. But something has happened to them. And that something is that they've been with Jesus. Number two, who have you become since you've been with Jesus? Do you have a boldness that does not match your background? what they say about Pastor Hunt. To my friends that I went to college with, they say, I, I, I want to ask, how you got in this church thing? Because they know how I used to get down. And they say, man, I see you got a church in Pastor. How you got in this church thing? I said, at the first time when I got the question, I really didn't know what to say. I would have been talking out of flesh. 
And Peter, if he didn't let the Holy Spirit move, he would have talked out of flesh. You calling me uneducated? Right. I've been walking with the book. I've been living three years with the word. You know, that's how the disciples could have been like that. What you talking about uneducated? I live with the word. His name is Jesus. And John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and he dwelt among us and he, he said and, and the darkness light came into darkness and the darkness comprehended it not but I walked with him, I talked with him I, I walked on water with him what are you talking about? uneducated, non-professional but when you get with Jesus and you with him long enough the insults of people. Don't even <laughs> you know how young people say? Yeah. It does it all. The insults of people don't bother me. You know, it was interesting that young girl, the filmmaker girl, folk were laughing at her at the BET Awards because of her wig, you know. They said her wig was kind of twisted. And she did a little Instagram response to the people. She was crying. She's blowing her nose with a hundred dollar bill. Come on. She, she, she was like, uh, yo, <laughs> y'all worry about me. Oh, all right, now I just don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. She had a hundred dollar bill, she's blowing her nose with. <laughs> now, now, and I ain't telling you you gotta get like that. But I'm telling you, you gotta get so bulletproof. Oh, yes. Yes. Of people, you gotta be Teflon. You gotta let yourself slide off. Slide off. Just, 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 just slide off. Just slide off. Just, just slide off. Who are you become? Are you still moved by what they say? Or by who's saying it? that Peter had progressed because in Luke 22 he was a scaredy cat around people who had no power to do anything with his life but by Acts 4 he won't scare no more thank you Jesus thank you Lord as I close this morning point number 3 who have you become Christian, I wrote it down, that claims you know Christ, but you think just talking about him isn't enough to convince people around you. Look at the story of Peter, a man who in Luke 5 didn't believe he was worthy. By Matthew 16 declares that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. By Luke 22 is denying him. By Acts 4, while going off to prison with handcuffs on, he's declaring Jesus is Lord. And at the word he preached, which is the rock that Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. At that word, the Bible says, five saved. They didn't care that the man saying it was uneducated. They didn't care that the man saying it was a non-professional. They didn't care that the man saying it was about to catch some charges and go to jail for the night and probably longer. They didn't care nothing about that. Why? Because it was not about the man. It was about the message. this morning. Who have you become in your walk with Christ? There's a number of things you can learn from the lesson of Peter. Just because you fall while walking with him, that doesn't mean you failed. Get back up and keep walking. Hallelujah.
you because I promise you, Jesus has not forgotten about you. Like he said, and I got a hundred sheep and one goes astray. I'm going after the one and leave the 99. The 99 good. I'm going after the one. You are the one this morning. Wherever you may be watching this broadcast, I need you to lift up your hand. You're the one. 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 I'm with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I, I declare you're the one. You're the one. 99. Hallelujah. May be good. But you're the one. He says, Hallelujah. I know 99 and a half and 99 point whatever percentage may sound good to others. But Jesus says, I want 100%. Nothing less. More if possible, but nothing less. You may be that one. You are that one this morning. Lift up your hands with me. Right where you stand with me. It seems strange. Put your phone down. Put your tablet down. Rest it somewhere where you can see the screen and where you can lift up both hands as a sign of surrender in the room where you're sitting. Lift up both your hands. Bow your head. Repeat after me, Lord. I honor you this morning. I thank you for arresting my attention long enough to hear this message and to understand that my fall does not mean my fit. And because you have graced me with the opportunity this morning to hear the voice of God, not Pastor Harmon, not the Love Fellowship Overseer of the Love Fellowship Kingdom Restoration Town Michael Pump, God's voice. You've allowed that preacher to hide behind the cross and let no flesh be glorified in God's sight. Because you've allowed me to hear this message. I realize I can progress in God just my God. Just start out a stranger then I can be tur turned into a sold out believer and even along that way I could fall and deny him that he has not denied me I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior that he came to the earth not just to heal the sick open up blinded eyes cause the lame to walk but he came to die on the cross on my behalf to take my sin upon him down to the grave and then be caught up, get up three days later with power and then getting up for three days later with power, justify my faith in him and conquer death, sin, and hell. And because of that, I believe this morning I'm set, set free and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If that's a testimony this morning, I want you if that's your testimony this morning, I want you to message us that you've given your life to the Lord. I want you to message us this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to message us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to let us know that you got saved, that you confess Jesus Christ as Lord. I want to do something else this morning. I haven't done it in a while. Open the doors of the church. It's strange on virtual platform, but I'm going to open the doors of this church to anyone out there. You may be miles away from Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you, Lord. But in truth, you're only a button, pressing a button away from being connected to other believers fervently trusting that God is able to create an after this for our lives. If what you've been hearing here has been an encouragement to your life and you have really and truly been challenged and you have seen the hand of God move based on obedience to the word that you've heard preached across this pulpit and from this speaker this is not self-aggrandizement, but this is asking you to join with us, partner with us, become a member of this ministry. We've got to do ministry different 
going forward. Hallelujah. We may go back to a moment. When Spanish flu hit, it was similar to this, and then we went back to normal. There will be a back to normal as a new normal. When that normal comes, thank you, Jesus. We're going to continue to do this social media virtual platform of service and ministry. We're not just going to do it on Sundays. I try my best to come on throughout the week and be an encouragement and a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, based on what God is speaking to me and for me. I want you to pray for me as I pray for you that God will continue to use me and hold me in His hands and hold me accountable to His Word so that when I come before you, I'm not giving you my opinions or my thoughts. And give you his word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray for peace in this land. Pray for justice in this land. Pray for equality in this land. Pray for equity in this land. There's so much that needs to be done. Pray that this begins to change that is necessary to make this land what it claims to be in its constitution and its bill of rights. This is a department service where you can be a blessing to us as we hope we've been a blessing to you all service long. I want you to thank, I want again thank first and foremost the membership here, people who are already members, I thank you for your faithful giving. Thank you for your sowing the tithes and your offering. It has helped us to sustain what we're doing here to even come back in the sanctuary and have service and have the technology available to serve you in this way, shape, or form. Continue to be a blessing. But we ask any others that would have a heart and a soul and a mind to be a blessing. Your contribution does not just help this ministry. It helps those that this ministry helps. And you can do that through your uh, cash app. It's dollar sign love fellowship SC, SC for South Carolina. Capital L for love, capital F for fellowship, capital S and capital C for South Carolina. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so. Please email us if you're one that got saved or if you're one that's interested in being a member. We can send you our virtual membership materials. And you can sign up for you. SCLoveFellowship at gmail.com. That means that stands for South Carolina Love Fellowship at gmail.com. S, S as in Sam, C as in Carolina, Love Fellowship at gmail.com. Please email us if you're interested. And we will gladly send you further information. We thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that the word and that the song was a blessing this morning. Even the scriptures that were read pray that you held on to something and you're starting a self-examination of who you have become in God. Just like Peter. He was a stranger. Then he got sold out. Then he fell. Then he went beyond being sold out. He was in power. I declare that's the same thing God, God desires to do for each and every one of you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen again. We want to challenge you and encourage you to pray for those that are incarcerated and their family members are unable to visit them because of this pandemic. Those that are incarcerated and may be infected with COVID-19, that is an even more tragic position to be in. May not get the health care that they need to get. Pray that you will cover them in this season and in this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we always say, I love, I love fellowship as we close. And because God is the greatest power, who shall not, cannot, and will not be defeated. In Jesus' name. Go forward and know you're becoming something great in God.